guys, so I wanted to make a quick video and go over the modifiers on the new Syntact by Electron. So the modifiers are down here and essentially by default at least all they do is make it so you have different levels of retrig. So in this case I have my clap right here. So if I hold this down it'll play the clap over and over. Essentially it'll retrig it. It'll do that at four different speeds. Now that alone is the power of the modifiers here. The other thing I do want to mention is that the key to using the modifiers is that you do need to press these on time and they are meant to be used live. So you can record them using the live recording mode where you hold record and press play. But essentially you're just, if you do that, you're just recording parameter locks or in the retrig case, you're just recording retrigs. So the modifiers themselves don't do anything out of the ordinary per se. They just make it super accessible to change parameters on the fly which kind of gives you a little taste of stuff you can do with the Octatrack or with the Analog Rhythm, for example, which to me is definitely one of the most powerful things about the Syntact, is that it combines stuff from those other flagship boxes that are also, of course, more expensive and brings it into a simplified, however very useful form on the Syntact. So the interesting thing is you don't have to just retrig if you don't want to. You can also assign these to different things. So the way you access that is you hold function and press up, which is the modifier setup right here. So by default, again, it's set to retrig. And then you can also actually change the retrigs to whatever you want using the encoders here. So as you can see, set that to like quarter notes, you know, triplets, any anything like that. I kind of like the way it's set up here personally. Because you can do some, definitely achieve some interesting rhythms with that. But there are also different things you can do like velocity, so if you hold function and hit uh, trig 14 here, that takes you to the velocity modifiers. So you'll notice that uh, the fourth one by default is set all the way, all the way up, and then respectively the other ones are set lower and lower. You know, if if I was going to set this myself, I'd maybe set the first one a little, like, pretty low. So that way you can achieve something like that. So those are the first two ones that you can use. The second two are labeled mod A and mod B. So the interesting thing about those is you can kind of look at those similar to an LFO. Not that they behave like an LFO, but being as they're unlabeled, you can choose which destination you want them to modify. So you do that by going up here with the D encoder, and you'll notice that you have all kinds of different things to choose from that you can modify. So let's try doing one with the filter. Filter frequency. And let's try it with like a bass note. But you'll notice that you need to, you probably need to modify it a little bit because the first one you can't even hear based on how the, the filter frequency is set. So 
that's an example of something you can do with the filter. However, there is one more thing here in the modifier section that I haven't mentioned yet, the trig modifier over here. So essentially the way we've been using it now, let's just go back to retrig, for example, function and 13 to get to retrig. So the way you do, the way that it behaves right now is that you just press any one of these modifiers and it does it for you. But if you go back to modifier setup and you turn trig off and hit no to get out of there, then you'll notice that when you press these, it doesn't do anything. This way, the way that you use it, hold one of them down and then press the trig that, or the track that you want it to affect. That trig setting is a couple different ways to use your modifiers. So I hope that helps you guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.